So what is a double tap? In croquet the term double tap describes when your mallet contacts your ball a second time during a strike. The taps are so close together that it's near impossible to detect by sound alone. A player is always at risk of doing a double tap if their ball and the target ball are within six inches of each other. This video explains what a double tap is, how to avoid one, and the actions if one does occur. In this animation your blue ball and the target red ball are close together. A normal swing will give the first tap, followed by the second tap of your ball as the mallet follows through. So rule one to avoid a double tap is to stop your mallet from following through. One technique to avoid follow through is to perform a stop or stun shot by grounding the back of the mallet. Step back very slightly from your normal stance and lean the mallet back very slightly. Strike the ball and then immediately ground your mallet. The mallet being angled back causes the back end of the mallet to act as a brake, stopping follow through without causing court damage. Another stop or stun shot technique is to rapidly lift your mallet at the instant of striking. Both stop shot techniques are valuable and require practice to become proficient. Stop shots will generally not prevent a double tap if the balls are two inches or less apart. Looking down on the mallet and balls, this animation shows the effect of striking at an angle to avoid a double tap. The closer the two balls are, then the more acute the angle needs to be. Of course, if the two balls are touching, then a double tap is not possible. But do make sure to confirm with your opponent that they are touching, and then you can play at any angle. Another technique that can be difficult to master is to have your mallet at an angle and then swing it sideways. Remember that you must strike the ball with the face of your mallet. Striking with an edge is a fault, so become proficient with this technique before using it in a game. Yet another technique is to tilt your mallet well forward and then rapidly jab it downwards. Again remember that you must strike the ball with the face of your mallet and in addition you must avoid lawn damage. This technique requires probably even more practice to master. Finally consider deeming your shot but first consider does it help your partner? Does it hinder the opposition? And what are the options for the opposition? So how can you suspect that a double tap has occurred? If the two balls travel apart at an angle greater than 45 degrees, then no double tap has occurred. If they travel apart at 45 degrees, then it all gets a bit questionable. If there was no double tap sound, then the striker gets the benefit of the doubt. If the two balls travel apart at less than 45 degrees, then a double tap has almost certainly occurred. Now if geometry was a challenge at school or has long since departed your grey matter, then your fully outstretched hand can provide a rough guide to what 45 degrees is. Another way of detecting a double tap is relative distance. If the two balls travel in roughly the same direction, then the target ball should travel at least four times further. If it doesn't, then a double tap is almost certain to have occurred. Finally, you are certain that your opponent has just double tap. The game score is locked six all 
your club is depending on you to win this contest, there's just no pressure. The opponent, of course, disagrees. Too late. You should have called a referee before the opponent played their shot. Without a referee, you can claim all you like, but the player has the final word on whether a double tap occurred. So what happens if your opponent really has done a double tap? Or they did not strike with the face of the mallet? Under the GC rules, it's called a fault. Play must be stopped, and you then have two choices. One, you can elect to leave the balls where they are. If the opponent ball went through the hoop, then they do not score any points. However, if you were knocked through the hoop, then you win that hoop. Your second choice is to ask for the balls to be replaced. No points are scored by either side. Your side then continues to play in sequence. Thanks for watching and do give the Toronto Club a visit someday.